glaciers form the largest reserves of fresh water on the planet, storing 75% of the Earth's fresh water. Today, they cover about 10% of the Earth. During the last ice age, glaciers covered about 32% of the total area of the planet. There are two types of glaciers. The first are alpine glaciers. They form on the slopes of mountains and slowly move down valleys. The second are continental glaciers, continental ice sheets that cover large areas. The largest of the existing glaciers is the Lambert Glacier, located in Antarctica. It is about 100 kilometers wide, 400 kilometers long, and 2.5 kilometers deep. The two largest ice sheets on Earth, the ice of Greenland and Antarctica, make up more than 99% of the world's glacial ice. But what would happen if all this enormous mass of glaciers melt? Where would all the water go? What would happen to the oceans? Would salt water mix with fresh water? In this video, you will learn what would happen if all the glaciers were gathered together in one place. What parts of the land would remain if all the glaciers melted? What would happen to Antarctica? And finally, what would happen to the flora and fauna? And how might the big melting change the length of day? These are just a few interesting facts. What would happen if all the glaciers melted? The total volume of ice on our planet is roughly estimated at between 25 and 30 million cubic kilometers. Even a person with a good imagination finds it hard to picture how it looks like. Let's try and say that if we were to pack all glaciers in one place, a one kilometer thick ice sheet would be larger in size than all of North America. Now, let's think what would happen if all that ice melts. Of course, the melting would not happen overnight. However, the current data we are going to share with you is very impressive. In a bad way. Back in 2019, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change at the United Nations published a scientific report on the ocean and the cryosphere. The report resonated widely around the world. The study showed that even small glaciers could add up to almost as much of Greenland's ice. For example, from 2006 to 2015, Greenland lost about 280 billion tons of ice each year, while the remaining glaciers lost 220 billion tons. By comparison, Antarctica lost only 155 billion tons of ice during all that time. The total rate of rise of the ocean's surface during the nearest past years averaged 3.6 millimeters per year. It may seem insignificant, but in fact, changes in the climate accumulate gradually and may come in leaps and jumps. The prediction is that the rate of melting glaciers is likely to increase and accelerate. NASA also made a prediction about the inevitable rise of the sea level by 90 centimeters in the near future. Now, let's imagine that all glaciers melt overnight. Scientists at the University of California, Irvine made a prognosis for such a scenario in the distant future. They predicted that if all the Greenland glaciers melt, sea level will rise by 7.4 meters. If Antarctica melts, the water level will rise by 58 meters. If all the glaciers on the planet were to melt, the water level would rise by 65 meters. What parts of the land will remain? The climate change models show that all coastal areas of all the continents will go under the big water one way or another. It will dramatically change the shape of continents as huge areas of land get submerged. For example, Florida will disappear. The Netherlands, which has been desperately fighting against the encroachment of the sea for the past decades, will eventually lose this battle. So will Denmark. So will much of Northern Europe. St. Petersburg will be underwater, and Venice will finally sink too. The Caspian Sea will become a real sea. Now, it is not even formally a sea, but a giant lake, as it is not connected to the ocean. After all the glaciers have melted, the Black Sea will cover the Caucasus to the east and make a new Bosporus to connect with the ocean. It will increase its size almost twice. 
China will experience huge floods as it loses part of its land to water. Water will cover the territory of Vietnam and the Philippines. Both countries will be badly affected. Dramatic changes will take place in South America. The Amazon River in Brazil will cease to exist because of a huge gulf formed on its place. It will greatly change the shape of the continent. The same will happen to the Piranha and Uruguay rivers in the lower part of the continent. They will turn into a bay, and the city of Buenos Aires will disappear together with territories at least 100 kilometers deep into the continent. Africa, in comparison with other continents, will lose the least amount of land. However, it is not a reason to rejoice, as rising sea levels will additionally increase the temperature of the air and will make life impossible in most parts of Africa. In addition, Egypt, Alexandria, and Cairo will be covered by waters of the expanding Mediterranean Sea. As a result of melting of ice and glaciers, the big water will form an inland sea in Australia, and the most part of a narrow coastal zone where many Australians live will disappear underwater. What will happen to Antarctica? What could we see in its place? Contrary to some predictions, the outlines of the continents will not be completely unrecognizable. A time traveler into the future will be able to look at the new maps of the Earth and recognize the contours of Australia, both Americas and Africa. But he or she will be amazed and puzzled by Antarctica, or rather at what he or she will see there instead of its place. The familiar contours of Antarctica are an illusion created by our current climate. In fact, even at the current level of the ocean, if we remove all the ice from Antarctica and leave only the land, we will see a group of large and small islands. And when all the ice caps melt, it will be covered by water or become a large archipelago. What will happen to seawater, flora, and fauna? Almost all glaciers have sedimentary origin. They contain billions and billions of tons of fresh water. All melted water will naturally dilute the salty waters of the ocean, thus reducing its salinity. In turn, desalination will lead to a dramatic ecological catastrophe. Some species of oceanic flora and fauna are bound to be extinguished. It will upset the fragile ecological balance. Some species of plants and animals will die out, while others will suddenly and dramatically increase their populations. It could launch a large-scale chain reaction and cause a global ecological catastrophe in the ocean and land ecosystems. As the salinity drops in the ocean water, it will go up in the groundwater. The significant rise in the ocean level will push saline water deep into the groundwater. It will create more salinated soils, making irrigation of fields and growing most food crops difficult on that land. Decreasing ocean salinity will cause the currents to slow down or even stop. For example, the Gulf Stream, which warms the air around northern Europe, would cease to exist. Of course, with global warming, the British islands would not be threatened by cold temperatures but there could be other drastic consequences. And of course, there are lesser side effects of melting glaciers. You should know that ice has accumulated not even thousands, but hundreds of thousands, even millions of years. No wonder that glaciers have accumulated tons of toxins from volcanic eruptions and other disasters. When they melt, all toxins will be released into the ocean and atmosphere which does not bode well for either. Moreover, there are other hazardous substances frozen and stored in the permafrost. Scientists warn about potentially dangerous chemical compounds, dormant ancient viruses and bacteria to which we have no immunity, or even nuclear waste dumps, which by then could have been abandoned and destroyed in the chaos of global disaster. What will happen to the climate in general? Glacial melting will not occur in isolation from other processes on a planetary scale. The phenomenon consists of dramatic causes and tragic consequences. 
global warming will affect ecosystems as well as human health, livelihoods, food security, water supply, and economic growth in many ways. As it accelerates and more water advances onto the land, more coastline becomes uninhabitable. A scientific team of anthropologists, ecologists, and climate change specialists compiled an extensive report after comprehensive investigating, modeling, and researching on the global climate change. The article, Future of the Human Climate Niche, published in the Journal of American National Academy of Sciences, PNAS, drew the attention of the world. It revealed rather grim and frightening data. Predictions show that the areas of our planet with the average annual temperature over 29 degrees will expand from 0.8% to 19% of the Earth's land area by 2070. The impacts are projected to increase steeply with the degree of warming. By the way, we want to remind you that 29 degrees Celsius is an average temperature of the Sahara Desert. Temperatures will rise not only in the currently uninhabited desert zone, but also in the densely populated areas with the highest birth rates on the planet. Large areas in South America, India, Africa, Northern Australia, and Southeast Asia could become hot, hostile, and uninhabitable it could happen even before all glaciers melt. Let us think about the length of the day. It can seem that the day length is unrelated to melting. However, global warming could affect the rotation of the Earth. Let us look at the giant Three Gorges Dam in China on the Yangtze River. It only slowed the rotation of the planet by 0.06 microseconds. Not much but it is not a zero. When the glaciers melt, water will be pulled from the poles toward the equator due to the Earth's rotation around its axis. That is why the Earth may slow down the speed of rotation and the day will become longer by 10 to 20 seconds. Seconds added to the day do not worry mankind because humans will face more survival challenges. Currently, about 40% of mankind live close to water at up to 70 meters above sea level. As the water level rises, coastal cities and entire islands will be submerged. Cities and countries like the Netherlands and Japan may disappear. The governments invest billions into the programs to postpone the inevitable flooding. Sooner or later, those 40% of people will have to move inland leaving the coastal cities behind. The livable areas will be overpacked. Humanity will experience the brunt of overpopulation. The flooding of the densely populated ports of Calcutta and Shanghai will cause not only human suffering, but also economic losses. Melting will destroy seaport infrastructure and disrupt the intercontinental trade, as all ports will have to be rebuilt the fishing industry will have to be fundamentally overhauled. Water will also cover much of the fertile land. Therefore, agriculture and the entire food sector of the world economy will be affected. Any good news? Oddly enough, yes. Along with cataclysms, scientists point to possible positive environmental and economic outcomes of the Arctic ice caps and icebergs melting. Unfortunately, it is a small solace, as it will in no way compensate for the losses. We can only hope that it can provide opportunities for the adaptation of human life in fundamentally new conditions. The list of opportunities is not shot and will be presented gradually. Many experts believe that by 2100, most of the Arctic waters will be completely free of ice which would open new routes for maritime cargo transportation. A new route between Northern Europe and the countries of Asia will open through the North Sea. It will be 40% shorter than the route through the Suez Canal. At present, the Northern Sea route is passable only for caravans led by icebreakers during short summer months. The recession of glaciers will bring new opportunities for mining. The Arctic Shelf, for example, is one of the most promising sources of hydrocarbon reserves, and Alaska hides large deposits of gas, oil, 
copper, and nickel under ice. Territories which are now inaccessible in terms of subsoil development, Antarctica and Greenland may offer the salvation for mankind after loss of many areas of mineral deposits. After discussing the unwelcome future that global warming can bring, we hope mankind will invent and implement innovative technologies for ecologically clean energy. We can stop and reverse global warming to save our planet. Mankind must live more responsibly and reduce its carbon footprint to prevent future catastrophes. Fortunately, there is time to make changes for the better. All we need is a will and determination to change for a better future so we can avoid a grim scenario. As we just learned from the video, it is better for mankind never to see what is covered by Antarctica ice.